Bonjour tout le monde. Welcome to another series on what pharmacists do. Today I have with me Dr. Madeline McCorry. Um, Dr. McCorry or Maddie, as I'm going to call you throughout the conversation, if that's okay with you, is a uh, medical science liaison, senior medical science liaison at Big Health. And she's here to talk to us today about industry pharmacy and what a pharmacist does in that setting. Welcome, Maddie. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you today? I am good, Bridget. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm really happy you're here. Uh, I would like to start by asking about um, your career path. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself um, and how you got to choosing a career in pharmacy and industry pharmacy specifically up to where you are today at Big Health? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'll start with, I, I'm originally from Nairobi, Kenya. That's where I was born. Mm -hmm. um, and when we came to the States, we came to uh, California and then eventually up to Seattle, Washington. And that's kind of where I grew up. And um, after graduating high school in Seattle, I decided to go to pharmacy school mm -hmm. in Boston, all the way on the other side of the corner of the U.S. And yeah. that was really based off of, um, I just did very well in AP chemistry in, in high school. And my teacher actually suggested it to me. And mm. I knew I wanted to be in the medical field, but I was, you know, doctor, nurse, you know, pharmacist. And um, my mom's a nurse. And I remember her just saying pharmacy is like the cleanest job, you know, like they're the <laughs> ones that walk through the hallway at the hospital and they're always happy and just have the cleanest job. You should, you know, definitely go into that. So um, I kind of decided to do that. And um, so I went to school at MCPHS University in Boston and kind of towards my, the end, end of my training, I had been working at Boston Children's Hospital and wanted to do pediatrics um, residency and pediatrics pharmacy. Um, and then we had a class as an elective that I took that was called Introduction to the Biopharmaceutical Industry. Mm -hmm. And we have different industry professionals come in every week and, and talk to us. Mm -hmm. And one week we had an MSL come in, a medical science liaison. And I just remember being like, wow, what is this job? I want to do exactly what she described. Like everything sounds amazing. The travel, working from home, the work-life balance, um, mm -hmm. working with KOLs, key opinion leaders. And so I, I immediately switched and decided to do a fellowship. And I landed one with um, through MCPHS nice. University. Down nice. and, and kind of it just took off from there. I did a medical affairs fellowship and went straight into the, the MSL role. Oh, no. I have to admit, uh, my favorite thing about being an MSL, looking from the outside, looking in, is that you guys, male or female, pharmacists or, not, or, or doctors or medical doctors, always look great, <laughs> always dress up so nicely, and you know what you're talking about. And I think I was kind of attracted. I still am uh, attracted to that just because I like traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, I like dressing up and looking good. I like... Uh, learning things and teaching it to others. Um, so it's always been uh, something that I've been keeping my eye on. But um, at that time in my life in pharmacy school with young kids and yeah. the logistics just weren't adding up, but I'm still um, keeping my eye on it. As soon as my kids go off to college, I think it's, it's really something um, uh, I'm going to look into. But that's not a good reason just because you want to dress up and... <laughs> and look good uh yeah. but from the outside looking in i always admired um that side of pharmacy for that so but what is industry pharmacy and um what do you do if you can describe your typical role as a pharmacist at big health well, to, to your point earlier, um, the wonderful thing about being an MSL is you can enter the MSL profession at any point in your career. Mm -hmm. um, people mm -hmm. come from retail pharmacy, from uh, as medical doctors who are practicing before, um, PhDs that were doing bench science transition to the MSL role. So it's a wonderful role that your skills can translate to at any point in your career when you decide when it best fits you. Yeah. You, you can yeah. translate that and, and really move into the MSL role. So yeah. um, depending on the company and the role and your products and whether it's big pharma versus biotech versus medical device versus health tech, um, the day-to-day -day of an MSL might differ a little bit, but it's really, the top things are really your interactions with your key opinion leaders. So those thought leaders that are in your therapeutic area that are leading clinical practice, that are leading research, mm -hmm. those are the uh, individuals that you want to be meeting with maybe on a quarterly basis and having um, essentially influence with and relationships with between your company okay. and 
and, and them as a stakeholder. Um, there's also a lot of project management that comes with um, being an MSL. So that can be anywhere from creating medical decks that you're utilizing out in the field, mm -hmm to doing um, investigator initiated um, studies and writing papers and being authored on um, uh, abstracts and posters. Uh, so it's a really though, um, the main part of it is the relationship maintenance and building between mm -hmm, your company mm -hmm. and your mm -hmm. external facing stakeholders who tend to be key opinion leaders, managed care, um, pharmacy benefits managers. Um, it, and it really can vary depending on your company, but it, it is almost a social job and a relationship building job and maintenance Absolutely. job. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But what, tell us about your position specifically. Um, what is your product? What is your area of expertise and what area do you work in and, and things yeah. like that? So most of my background has actually been in immunology and dermatology specifically, but I've transitioned now into a mental health care space uh -huh. and I'm actually big health. Um, I'm, it's a startup company that's focused in the health tech um, industry. So we're, um, we work on digital therapeutics mm -hmm. and right now we have a product for insomnia and a digital therapeutic for anxiety. Um, so I, I love the mental health space. And I think that translates to all the disease states, because when we look at um, clinical trials and, and, you know, reporting, we're focused always on quality of life outcomes, patient reported mm -hmm. outcomes. And a lot of that has to do with how the patient is feeling and how they're doing on the product and whether it's affecting their day-to-day -day life. And if it's improving, um, those are such, um, uh, you know, looked at um, outcome measurements. And so I mm -hmm. love mental health because it really does span across the disease states, but also mm -hmm. it's something that's so extremely prominent, especially in the last two or three years with the pandemic. Yeah. Um, we're all suffering and we, we need ways to alleviate and get access to patients and, and help with insomnia, anxiety, and even further than that, depression, ADHD, and so many other mental health challenges. Yeah, yeah. Great. The two things, uh, two key things I took away were project management yes. and relationship building. And yes. um, wouldn't you say that that's um, those are skills or uh, or professional um, areas that apply um, that are, apply to pharmacy um, in general? And it ties to your point to the to your point that no matter where you are in your career path, no matter what your past background is, whether it's retail pharmacy or clinical pharmacy, you could always uh, build yourself into um, a career in industry or in, as a medical science liaison. Yeah, absolutely. I think even if you take, you know, for example, a retail pharmacist, you're conversating with doctors who yeah. are essentially colleagues at the medical level, right? The conversations you have mm -hmm. are very medical heavy, whereas mm -hmm. you also have to be, be able to translate that medical information to a patient who may not yeah. have a medical background. Yeah. And yeah. that's exactly what MSLs do. We have to talk to sales reps. Mm -hmm. We have to talk to stakeholders that maybe aren't don't have a medical background, but we also have to talk to stakeholders that are the top at the of their field who are yeah, doing yeah. the research for your company yeah, and so yeah. you have to have the language that can adjust for all of that and i think pharmacists are really um trained in that and, and really are flexible in what we yeah. do and we're able to take yeah. all of our backgrounds and move into the msl role and translate our activity to it because um we're built for it and we're trained yeah. for it and that's yeah. the wonderful thing about having that farm d <laughs> yeah I agree with you 100%. And that's why we, that's why I like to do these videos because it shows um, the flexibility of our profession and um, the different ways providers and patients and industries can use us um, to better patient care overall. Absolutely. So the last question I have for you is if anyone watching um, is interested in pursuing a career in industry, whether they're uh, prospective pharmacy students or in pharmacy school or already pharmacists practicing. Um, what advice do you have for them um, to help guide them in pursuing a career in industry? Yeah, I think, you know, do your research. Um, some of us were, you know, really blessed to be at pharmacy schools, especially on the East Coast that 
um, teach us about industry and retail and clinical and we get it all on the table and we get to decide from there whereas I know depending on where you are in the country you might not have access to internships in industry you might not have yeah, um, yeah. access you know to summer internships or you know rotational internships in industry or the information that you need about industry mm -hmm. and but now in the day and age we are you have LinkedIn you have um, IPHO you have all these great resources mm -hmm. so do your research because being an industry pharmacist is, is such an uh, umbrella term. You can right, work with right. medical affairs, marketing, mm -hmm. commercial, um, health economics and outcomes research, clinical yeah. research, R&D. Yeah. There are so many opportunities, regulatory affairs, just um, so many opportunities. Yeah. So that means you do your research and then um, like we were talking about earlier before we got on this call, LinkedIn is such a powerful tool. Absolutely. Utilizing LinkedIn, reaching out to people that are doing what you are interested in. Mm -hmm, hey, can mm -hmm. we meet over coffee? Can we meet virtually? Um, I have some questions and come prepared. You know, I get these emails all the time. Come prepared with all of the questions you have. There's no small question. There's no dumb question. You want to ask Absolutely. and get the information you need so you can yeah. make that educated decision yeah. Yeah. of, do I want to do a fellowship, a residency? Do I want to do regulatory? Um, how do I find these internships in the summer so I'm prepared? Um, those are questions you have to put yourself out there and ask because yeah. it will not just come to you magically. Absolutely. So my advice is, is getting out there, utilizing LinkedIn as such a powerful social um, media tool and and asking and not being afraid to ask yeah absolutely doing your research and connection 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 and linkedin is a perfect platform um, for seeking out um, professional connections uh, you mentioned ipho i read a little bit about ipho do you mind going over a little bit what is ipho because um even as some schools have uh, like AMCP chapters or CSHP chapters. These are all pharmaceutical in, um, uh, organizations that can help students, you know, kind of get into um, exploring the field that they want to go into. I don't, I haven't heard of an IPHO or pharmacy student chapter, but I think IPHO is a big one for industry. What is it? And, and is there a membership people can get involved in and oh, yeah. sharing anything like that? Absolutely. They're a big organization. When I was in school, um, they had very limited chapters. I don't even think our college had one. Okay. Um, but nowadays, what I see online, it's mm -hmm. they're in a lot of university pharmacy schools and universities. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they have a lot of opportunities. So what I utilized them for when I was um, kind of heading towards fellowship mm -hmm. was they're very good about posting fellowships that yeah. may not, not necessarily be tied to a university. So it might be with the medical communications company um, or it might be a standalone fellowship where they are not tied to Rutgers or MCPHS or um, any of the other big university fellowship programs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think they're wonderful about being a great resource for pharmacy students. Um, I'm not sure what member membership looks like, if it's for free or if it's um, there's okay. a, a a monetary value for it as a student, yeah. but um, I think it's worth it. And I think that um, it's worth getting involved. And I've seen students um, that are involved in the organization at the national yeah. level, as well as their chapter level. Okay. Um, and I think they're doing such a wonderful job, really helping okay. students get. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Connect and get involved and do your research. And yes. last thing, uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, how do we do it? You can always, guys, um, reach out to me on my Instagram page, The Rookie Pharmacist, on LinkedIn, The Rookie Pharmacist. I also have a uh, webpage, therookiepharmacist.com, uh, and I can help you connect uh, with Dr. McCory. But do you have any other um, information as far as connecting with you? Yeah, you can just, um, if you tag me, just find me on LinkedIn and add me. That's just okay. another way to connect and feel free yeah. to message me if you, you know, you want to connect and talk about um, industry pharmacy. Awesome. So happy to have you today. And um, thank you so much for all the golden nuggets you've provided us. And hopefully uh, we can have you on more episodes later to talk about different aspects of industry pharmacy. Until then, guys, stay blessed. I love you. Have a good rest of your week. Bye-bye.